words about oh, you oh, first. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Just a little bit since you sent that wonderful um, little blurb, I just wanted to share it. Uh, Maribaba's oh. love has inspired Max for nearly 50 years to create songs, poems, Dear. stories, and paintings. His most recent published project is a CD of original songs, Love's River, produced by Cliff Hackford. There it is. Max is going to share his own songs as well as a few he loves by Baba Lover friends and songwriters such as Kate Wolf, Leonard Cohen, the Incredible String Band, and others who he feels catch the flavor of his love. Thank yeah. you, Max. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Yeah. Actually, I think it, it, as I was practicing these, they they turned out to be more the actual Baba songs, but maybe I'll do a couple of others as well. Um, thank you. Welcome, everyone, in Avatar Mayor Baba KJ. Um, I'm going to start with a version with an English translation of the Gujarati Arti. And, uh, I, you know, I've sung the Gujarati Arti for years at, uh, in India and here and elsewhere, and it's a little, it's odd, you know, to be singing in another language and you don't really know what you're saying, but, you know, Baba wrote it <laughs> and I sing it and I like the melody, but a few years ago, I, I, there's a, uh, the English words are in the from the source Mayor Baba songbook that came out years ago. And I, I began reading them and I fell in love with the English translation. Uh, in fact, I think I'll read it before I sing it. Oh God, command that the fire of our ignorance be extinguished. Your lovers yearn for you to bestow upon them the light of faith. Oh Mershid Mayor Baba, we your lovers lay our heads at your feet Oh, Mer Baba, you have made yourself perfectly aware of your godhood. You are the Lord of truth. You are the lover and the beloved in one. Being the torrent of infinite knowledge, you are the ocean of oneness. Oh, Master, bestow upon us, the wayfarers, the knowledge of Izad, the only one worthy of worship. For you, O oh, Paramatma, are omniscient and our divine knowledge itself. Give us to drink of the cup of God's love that we become intoxicated. O oh, Saki, we offer our lives in sacrifice to you. Give us this draft. Only if you steer our ship while in mid-ocean can we remain afloat. O oh, Mer Baba, the captain of our ship, you are our protector. O oh, Mer Baba, the captain of our ship, you are our protector. So, uh, you know, after really loving those words for quite a while, um, I went to Myrtle Beach last summer and, and recorded that uh, CD with Cliff Hackford. And uh, there was a time when we needed a few, so few more songs for it. And I really wanted to write music to that, to the Gujarati Arti uh, in English. And... I felt it was completely beyond my musical capacity to write anything anywhere near what would be required. I just didn't, I felt you would need all kinds of chords and stuff to really do, give it its due. And I, I only know like, you know, C, G, F, A minor. I'm, I don't do jazz chords very much. I did one once. <laughs> but what I did was I sat with the song I don't know. I, I sat with the song for like three days and just tried different things. And they were mostly terrible and they just didn't work at all. But I just kept trying new things. And finally, I, I just hit an E minor chord. And I had a feeling that was that I could find something if I started with that chord. And I sat for another day or two and just pieced out every single, you know, every single phrase and line. And finally, I mean, Baba gave me the song, basically. <laughs> and so it was a thrill, you know. It was like writing, I mean, I didn't write the words of the song, but, you know, there's a thrill to really write the music of the song, this song. So so here it is, the, uh, my ver the, someone's version of the, the version that Baba gave me. God, 
God commanded the fire of our ignorance be extinguished. Your lovers yearn for you to bestow upon them the light of faith. Oh, Merced Meher Baba, we your lovers lay our heads at your feet. Oh, Mayor Baba, you have made yourself perfectly aware of your Godhood. You are the Lord of truth. You are the lover and the loved in one, being the torrent of infinite knowledge. You are the ocean of oneness, your master bestow upon us the wayfarers, the knowledge of Israel, the only one worthy of worship. For you, O Paramatma, are omniscient and our divine knowledge itself. Give us to drink of the cup of God's love that we become intoxicated. O oh, Saki, we offer our lives in sacrifice to you. Give us this draft. Only if you steer our ship while in mid-ocean can we remain afloat. Baba, the captain of our ship, you are our protector. Oh, Mayor Baba, the captain of our ship, you are our protector. Let's see. I'm going to uh, start with uh, sort of a little chronology, I, I guess. The first uh, song I wrote, um, again, it's, it's not clear who wrote it because it, it just sort of popped out uh, directly to Baba. Um, and I was, use the harmonica for this one. This was in 1976, and I was I'd come to Baba in 1971 through a, uh, a a photo. There's I'll tell the story very very briefly. There was a uh, I was visiting old college friends in Chicago. One of my friends had been a political radical, and then he had changed, and all of a sudden he was working in an advertising agency. And I'd heard he had come to Mayor Baba, and I'd heard of Mayor, but somebody had read me. Mayor Baba's uh, obituary in the New York Times on February 1st, 1969. But I hadn't really ever learned anything about Baba. So finally, I was back in Chicago where this guy that I had known who had come to Baba lived. And, uh, but I was, I was avoiding him because it was all a little too much. He had changed so much from being a radical to an advertising man and Baba. And everywhere I would go, I would go visit all our old friends and every one of them would have like some book by Mayor Baba or about Mayor Baba in their bookcase. And they would say, oh, Ellis brought, his name is Ellis Pines. Ellis brought that book by. And then we would never talk about Baba. We would just talk about how eccentric Ellis was. And it was just too much for me. I wasn't ready. And, and so I was avoiding Ellis. I was in Chicago for about two weeks visiting all my old friends. Finally, about a day before I was going to leave, um, I had this really powerful dream. It was more, more real than waking life. I won't go into the dream, but I didn't know there could be such dreams. And then the next thing I knew, I fell back asleep. Then the, then the phone rang, and it woke me up. And one of the people I was staying with said, it's for you. And I sleepily put the phone to my ear, and this voice says, hi, this is Ellis. And that's the guy I've been avoiding. And... Uh, he just said, I'm, I'm glad to hear you're in town, and I hear you're doing well. I'm really happy to hear that, and I wonder if you might want to, I'd love to see you if you might just want to stop by my office and say hi before you leave town. 
So, and his voice was very disarming. I felt completely natural with him. There was nothing too intense or weird or anything. It's just talking to an old friend. And I said, sure. So then the next morning I took the, the, the L train downtown to the Prudential building in Chicago where he worked in a big a Leo Burnett advertising agency and took the elevator to the 24th floor or something and sat in the, in the very plush waiting room. And in a little while he came out and it was the same guy that I had known in college who, who had, he had the hugest smile, much bigger than his face. But he used, I used to, I used to see him smiling like when he was tripping on acid or something. And now he came out wearing a suit and he gave me the same smile <laughs> and, and embraced me and led me through these, this corridor into, into this tiny, the tiniest office I've ever been in. If you've ever seen the movie um, Being John Malkovich, there's an office in that movie that's like, it's the eight and a half floor and then the ceiling's only about this high. And Ellis's office wasn't much bigger than that. So he sat down in the chair behind the desk and I saw there's one other chair and I sat down and I looked, looked at him and then I looked above him and there was a great big, I am the ancient one poster behind him uh, on his wall in this seemingly very conservative advertising agency. And uh, so now I, I, it, it just occurred to me, you know, I tried to read the Bob's discourses before and couldn't, I was just veiled. And I thought, now there's somebody who knows something about Mayor Baba. So these questions started to coming out of my mouth. And I wasn't planning them. I just said, does Mayor Baba, does he say he, did he say he was God? And Ellis said, well, he says everybody's God and everything. He just gave Baba's perfect answers. Everything is God. But there are only a few who are uh, fully conscious of their divinity. And those are the ones who really can guide others. And then I said, why shouldn't I follow uh, Christ or Ramakrishna, both of whom I'd been doing some reading about. And then that was when Ellis told me who Baba had said he was, that he's the avatar and how often he comes and who he said he had been in recorded history. And there may have been a few more questions. And then all of a sudden, for once, no more questions. My, I was just, my mind was quiet. I didn't, I felt like something maybe would happen, was going to happen now, but I didn't know what. And, uh, and I was doing this, this calculating in my mind, okay, you know, he was who, who, who you say he was, but he died two years ago. So what does that mean? And, you know, so I just, the words just popped out of my mouth again without my even planning to say anything. I just said, well, where is he now? And I waited for my friend to uh, answer. And he's just, start, I look at him, he's just smiling. And I keep, and I said, I'm glad you're happy, but when are you going to answer my question? And he just keeps smiling. And then, I mean, I don't know how to describe this part in words, but then I, the ocean of love that he was feeling just swallowed me too. And uh, I sort of became that, you know, for, I don't know how long it took before it started wearing off, but I, but nothing had to be said in words. And uh, this, this pinkish feeling, I didn't see anything pink, but being just Mayor Baba was introducing himself to me. And it was just the most powerful introduction that I probably still draw on every day of my life. Um, I think I, in fact, I think I'm, I'm just improvising. I wrote down some things to do here, but I'll start with a poem about that experience because it's, it says it in maybe a more potent way. It's called The Search. Every morning when I wake up, I wonder when I'm really going to wake up. It's been years now and still no sign of really dying and being born. And like a pilgrim in the desert, I keep plodding on, looking for the only non-mirage there is, the city called love. And how do I know this city exists? In answer, my mind takes me back to a small room long ago and the broad smile of a friend as he told me God is love and who God is. And as he spoke and then stopped speaking, his smile went on and on and the room filled with the presence and time and space collapsed completely into love, into which we both disappeared, yet remained. 
And the sun rose in its glory and bathed me in its light and fed me with its honey and blessed me with its sight and in the folds within my robe. For a while I knew truth as told of since the ancient times and I'd found eternal youth. And my friends, when I left that room, I sang a different song and searched a different search for nothing I'd known before could satisfy me once time and space had given way to love like the thinnest membrane parting to reveal the vastest universe. And I saw that what I had known had never been very real, but only stands to mark time as we wind our way to that love, uniting all. Jay Baba. Okay, are you still there? <laughs> okay. We're still here, just okay, blown now away. I'm gonna... I'm going to do this song uh, that was written, the, the first song I ever wrote um, directly to Baba in 1976. I was in Myrtle Beach. Uh, I had been stayed on the center, and then I was staying at my friend uh, Edward Luck's home apartment, who's now uh, deceased. And today's his birthday. I have a picture of him on a collage right up on my wall. And today, happy birthday. Ed. His birthday was July 7th. And uh, this is called The Wake Up Man. I, I've played it at RT one time. Some of you have heard it a couple times. Sleep, children, sleep. All quiet in the nursery, dream, children, dream. The wake up man is on his way. The little man, all dressed in pink, is entering the nursery. He sees the sleeping children, he guards us while we dream. Sleep, children, sleep, all quiet in the nursery. Dream, children, dream, the wake up man is on his way. Watch him walk, just watch him, his step is very light, his eyes, see how they twinkle, and flash from left to right, yes he's just like a cat so nimble, you hardly can believe, and the silent music of his laughter, Brings out that he'll never leave. And he sees the sleeping children and rocks us while he beams when he knows we're ready he wakes us from our dreams sleep children sleep all quiet in the nursery dream children dream the wake up man is on his way the wake up man is on his way. Okay, Jay Baba. Um, thank you. <laughs> I think I'm going to do uh, some of these songs are sort of uh my standards because they're on this cd and i'm I, I really like them that's why i 
they're on the CD. And I'm not that prolific a songwriter. In fact, I haven't been writing songs for a number of years. That just they don't come out that way. Um, once in a while. Um, but it, but this is a favorite one, and this is this is one that I will have some that I haven't done publicly before for those who have seen me <laughs> sing a few times. But uh, this is another one that I'm just fond of it because uh, one time in India, I think it was in 1996. I think it's been around that long. And uh, I don't know, I said to Baba or Baba said to me, you're going to write your spiritual autobiography in a song. And it's, I didn't know if I could do it, but I went in India. It's, it's been easier for me to write songs. I don't know. Uh, a larger percentage of the ones I've, I've actually written were done in India. So this is a, a spiritual autobiography called 20th Century Boy. I was a, I was a 20th century boy. I did what I thought that I wanted to do. Well, that really isn't true Because the fear was in my vein And I was running from my pain I don't know where I would have wound up It seemed like the game was already on But Mayor Bobby, you smiled one day with a wave of your hand, I heard you say, son, all of this is mine, and it will be yours too someday. That was in 1971, such a long, long time ago. Oh boy, bewildered by his time, you took him in. And you showed him the score In high school The only thing that really was fun Was sneaking into the rich people's swimming pools In the middle of the night It was our only delight It was the only time I wasn't feeling strangled in school And in the deep dark water I would touch my soul or something like it at the bottom of the pool. Then the people in the houses would turn on their lights, and my friends and I would panic and we'd run through the night. We'd jump in my convertible and drive all night west and freedom till the morning light. That was the only way I knew to forget myself, and the rest of the time was just something else. But Mayhem, Baba, you came to me. You opened my eyes, and I started to see how you painted the whole world a bright shade of pink. And how who I am is not just who I think. How from the beginning of time there was only you And you took me home and I saw that was me too Oh God, what can I say When I left that room that day I walked away from everything I knew Into the unknown following you now down the corridor of years you've traveled with me, past mountains and valleys, I can hardly believe. Well now, Meher, Meher, where are we going to? After 49 years of your magic carpet ride. Uh, let's see. I had a thought of what I would do next, and I forgot what it is. 
I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you a little story that I had said at RT I would tell. Um, this is an amazing, like, evidence of Baba's divinity to me. And it's something that happened many years ago. And I hadn't, so many years ago, I hadn't thought about it for years. And then recently it came to mind for somehow. And I, I think I must have read an old poster, think, something I'd written about. It, and I was amazed. And I thought, my gosh, that's, that's a really powerful Bob experience. So here's what happened. <clears throat> when I was in my early 20s, I was um, living in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. I'd sort of been farmed out to an aunt and uncle because I had really messed myself up with LSD. And, and, but some time had passed, and I was, uh, by his grace, I was, I was feeling his love again at this time in my life in 1974. And I had enrolled in the University of Cincinnati to f finish college. I had a, a psychology professor there who was a very loving man and some had some spiritual, uh, something spiritual to him. He had a beautiful office in the psychology building that he would leave open 24 hours a day and people could come in if they needed space. And there were like beautiful paintings on the wall and coffee and, or tea and, uh, art materials if you wanted to use them and pillows all over the floor and a sign on the door as you were uh, saying come when you must leave when you come when you can leave when you must and another poster that said uh he was a calligrapher from dh lawrence uh nothing that comes from the deep soul is bad or can be bad so it was trying to convince us people who thought everything that was inside us was bad at that time in our lives when we were young um so anyway uh one day when I was in Cincinnati, I read an article in the Sunday newspaper, the Cincinnati Inquirer. And the article was called, big headline in the, maybe in the magazine section. The article was called, Bhakti Jim Comes Home. And it was about this guy, maybe about my age or slightly younger, who had uh, gone off either from Cincinnati or from one of the small towns in Ohio near Cincinnati to the, the uh, Hare Krishna commune in West Virginia. And he had, he had gone to live there and they had given him this name, Bhakti Jim. And I don't know how long he had lived there and maybe, I don't know, several months or six months or something. I, really, I don't remember that part. And the story was about how his parents had hired this deprogrammer. If some, most of you, uh, anywhere near my age will remember what that is. It's somebody that they would hire to basically kidnap you and talk you talk sense back into your mind, you know, make you like you used to be. So they hired this guy. He was, he was kind of a famous deep programmer. His name was Ted Patrick, and he had worked for Ronald Reagan in some capacity. And they had taken Jim back to Ohio and, and put him, you know, sat with him at, at a motel or something for a few days, I guess. And he had come out, you know, rid of that nonsense. So he was he was basically himself again, you know, who he had, had been. And he renounced his Hare Krishna, you know, beliefs and stuff. And my, my professor, Tom, the, the reason I mentioned this psychology professor, he had a, a seminar that spring called um, Styles of Spiritual Development. And basically, we would just sit around on the pillows uh, in his office and talk for three, two or three hours, four hours, I don't know. And he had seen something about this Bhakti Jim fellow and had called him up and he was going to be the guest at one of our classes and give a talk. And then we were going to talk about it, you know, with him. So he came and he uh, he was wearing he had become a deprogrammer himself at that point. He was uh, wearing a suit and carrying a briefcase. And I met the professor was sitting, Tom was sitting next to me as he came in and said, he whispered to me, he's being his father. And uh, anyway, so he got up in front of the, the group and he just started talking. And um, I don't remember that much about what he said. I remember a couple things. He said that, I remember him saying, and every spirit, every uh, guru has his rock band. And he, he ne ne named a bunch of them and then he said and with mayor baba it's pete townsend and the who and i knew that pete townsend and the who were not an official baba in fact pete townsend was the only baba lover in the group i think 
And uh, once uh, he said one other thing about Baba, he, somehow he mentioned, I don't remember the context, but in the course of his talk, he mentioned Baba one other time. He said, and then there's Mayor Baba who said he's going to come back and he's not going to come back. And he meant, he was under the impression Baba had said he was going to come back, you know, like right away, the second coming or something like that. And I don't remember anything else about his talk except he, he had like books in his briefcase that were like the evidence. And he would pull out, you know, the teachings of Don Juan or something. And and he talked for, I don't know, 45 minutes. Then then we just had, then we, I think we, we taught, we asked him questions or something. We broke and we had, you know, snacks. And while we were having snacks, I saw for a minute that this guy was uh, free. There wasn't anybody around him. And I walked up to him and I said, you know, I don't know that much about most of the stuff that you were saying, but I know something about Mayor Baba. And uh, he doesn't, the Who is not his official rock band. And then I said, and he never said he was going to come back right away. I don't know. I just said those two things, the things you said about him were wrong. And as I was talking, just matter of factly, and we were standing kind of in the middle of the room, this light came out from inside me and it physically pushed him back about six feet to the back wall and i could see it it was a bright light i mean it was i don't know and and i saw my psychology professor look and wonder what the hell's going on over there and that's all i know about it but i know bob i don't know why bob did that <laughs> but bob did that and it was i was a witness to that that independent you know seeing that independent power of Baba exerting itself because he knew it needed to be. I had no idea, you know, emitting a light to push the guy back six feet. Anyway, that's the story, Jay Baba. I haven't told that for 25 years, probably. So. Um, let's see. Let me get my banjo out for a minute. There's not that many... Um, Baba banjo songs that I found, but I have one that I wrote, and there's another one that I can do. This is a beautiful uh, handmade banjo that uh, somebody just gave it to me once. He was he was getting divorced and leaving town, and he just said, "I'm downsizing my possessions. Will you would you like this?" And it's almost an antique, which I checked out, and it is. It was made by some fellow in North Carolina in about 1910, I think. Anyway, the song's called All My Chips on One Horse. I've put all my chips on one horse And when the race has run its course Then I will be happy and free He's the white horse Avatar, and his name is Mayor Baba, and he will be mine eternally. He may not seem to run fast, but when the race is over and past, he'll make me his and seal the deal with his kiss. He came as Jesus and Ram, as Buddha, Mohammed, and Sham, and in our time once more, to open God's door. So put all your chips on this horse, and when the race has run its course, you too will be happy and free. The other uh, song I'm going to do on the banjo is, uh, let me get the Francis Brabazon songbook out. Actually, I, well, that's all right. I made a copy of this, but it's the, one of the first songs in the book anyway. There it is. Okay. And it's the song uh, Blacksmith by Francis Brabazon. Uh, Betty Lohman sang it at RT one day, and I realized it would work with the banjo. So. Take this heart, 
Take this heart, oh blacksmith, take this heart, make it a cup for wine. Shape the cup, shape the cup, oh blacksmith, shape the cup in love's own fair design. Take this breath, take this breath, oh blacksmith, take this breath as bellows for the fire. See the sparks, see the sparks, oh blacksmith, see the sparks rise higher, ever higher. Take these tears. Take these tears, oh blacksmith, take these tears to temper the job done. See the cup, see the cup, oh blacksmith, see the cup shine like the rising sun. Fill the cup, fill the cup, oh blacksmith, fill the cup with the wine of your sweat. See, I drink. See, I drink. Oh, blacksmith, see, I drink and drown my last regret. Oh, give to each. Give to each. Oh, blacksmith, give to each a cup of this rare wine. Then all men and women too. Then all people, oh blacksmith, then all folks will become divine. Okay, bye -bye. Oh, let's see. What should we do? What should we do? Well, Max, I just happened to see those paintings behind you. Yeah. Yes, Ruth. Did you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, sure. I'd, I'd be happy to. Angela had mentioned that. Um. <clears throat> what to say well uh the history of art in my life was that uh i took a painting class in college just to do something that i would never do which is paint oh yeah i had got that's right i had gotten an f in junior high school on an art project that i had thought was very good and from a teacher that my father and i used to give a ride to school every morning <laughs> And that had really discouraged me. <laughs> but by the time I was uh, back to college in Cincinnati, I mean, I had, it was like, you know, that song by the Grateful Dead that says, what a long, strange trip it's been. But it had already been a long, strange trip, and it was like another life. So I thought I might as well start painting. And uh, and I, my teacher, I had no idea what to do. I, I, I'm, I'm just going to talk about Bob. And my teacher said, use a lot of color and have fun. So that's what happened. And it started being meaningful. Um, art has been very important to me in life. There's another long uh, story I don't have time to tell. Art really saved my life in when I was about 40 years old. And I had uh, a nervous breakdown and ended up in a halfway house for six months, which was, which was a step up from the psychiatric ward where I'd been. But after a little, and I thought it was, you know, my path to sanity. I thought it was like salvation that I'd found this nice, clean halfway house. But after being there for a, a number of weeks, I, I, I felt, uh, I realized it was just another kind of crazy house. And their, 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 uh, so their, their idea for a solution to all your problems was to socialize with the rest of the mentally ill people in the social room and and I it was driving me crazy and one day I saw uh past an art store on the bus and I went and got some art materials I hadn't painted for a while kept them under my bed and uh got them out one night snuck away from the social room got them out and put a big pad of paper on my on the floor and 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 every night from then on for months a couple months I guess like a new world would come from inside me. And I saw that even though I might have messed up my outer life at that time in my life, in, in, internally, everything was whole and beautiful. And so Baba Shavada gave me this, for saved my life with it, really. I, it was so powerful, I wrote a short story about it. And uh, 
ended up having a, a, an exhibit uh, in uh, James Cox, who used to live in India. He, he had opened an uh, art gallery called the AMB Gallery in Hoboken, New Jersey. And well, everything came together in Baba's way and Baba's time, you know. So since then, I've, I've painted, uh, not, not all the time, but on and off, but in the last few years, quite a bit. And uh, it's just a thrill to be able to, I don't know, um, Bob, you know what Bob said, he said, art when inspired with love leads to higher realms, love art, and it will open for you the inner life. So um, these are all just paintings that have come out and I never knew where they came from. I don't, sometimes I don't paint for a long time and I don't know why the spigot turns off. I hadn't painted for a year before uh, a couple weeks ago, but like, it seems in retrospect to have been just a matter of moving some furniture so I could get to my easel. I don't know if it, you know, but anyway, I've started again. And I want to show you um, this one. This one's brand new. And this one, uh, this one, is, you can't even see it because it's so light. This is brand new. A couple days ago. And I wanted to show you, well, I, I'll show you a couple more. <laughs> this one, I, I like this one because you can't really see what's going on in it from back there. It shows any me or any of us maybe in the tunnel of our individual uh, sanskaras, I guess, shining the light toward Baba. And there's Baba welcoming us as we crawl towards the towards him. <laughs> And I'll That's really I'm beautiful, Max. Thank you, Ruth. I'm going to take one more. This is, I think, my favorite one that's ever come out of me. This is called um, Drown in the Ocean of His Eyes. And I used to, I sit, I would sit in, I have a little meditation closet, and I would sit there and look at a certain picture of Baba from Hermes' book. And uh, and would feel that you, it, that, I don't know if you know the picture, they're ones that were taken in England in the early 30s where you actually feel you could drown in Baba's eyes. It's like he's cheating. He's showing so much divinity. And so in this painting, I put Baba's actual face instead of the Samadhi on top of the hill, which is basically, the, you know, a deeper level of what really goes on there, I guess, I think. And two people starting to drown in his eyes. Gorgeous. Okay. Thank that you. is a gorgeous, yes. That. Yeah, anybody who wants to unmute at any time, feel free. Okay, yeah, yeah. People yeah. are just yeah. muted, on, so I wanted it. to let them know. But those are beautiful, Max. Okay. I'm sorry. Hey. <laughs> stay there. You stay there. Oh. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. Does oh, somebody else want to say or facts. ask anything? No? Okay. Okay, I'll do, I'll do, uh, we have about 20, 18 more minutes. I'll do a couple other songs, I think. If you have a song that you know I sing and you'd like to hear it, you can ask. This is one from the album that uh, Cliff and I did. And it's a simple sort of country song. It, it, was a, it had been a poem. And I saw that the, the, I had written this poem a few years before and saw that there were a lot of rhymes and it could easily become a song. This is called... Um, the Humble Cleaner. A humble cleaner came and knocked upon my door one day. I took the bolt out from the lock and I was glad to say, yes, cleaner, I will let you in. Please wash my house of ancient sin and banish, if you will, the stink of swill from my dark cellar. I took him to the cellar door and opened it so he could see. The cleaner smiled silently and it appeared he might agree. I said, my house has many rooms, some I've never even seen, but if you'll allow, I'll pick up rooms and help you clean. 
we worked together quietly and thoroughly, never fast. And as we went from room to room, the years grew past. At last, he put his duster down, but I said, with a wary frown, I need things shining perfectly. I'm waiting for the guest you see. He laughed as if I told the joke, unbuttoned, and took off his cloak and friends. I think you know the rest. The humble cleaner was the guest. Let's see, I'd like to do this one. I've never, uh, most of these songs I did, I've done like maybe 50 or 60 songs one time each at RT, and I've never repeated one. But this one I haven't gotten to because I, I, uh, I, know, I didn't, it's like that Bhakti Jim story. I hadn't thought of it, not for that many years, but this was on the first album a CD that I had made called The Wake Up Man, which was not uh, very good technically. And, and by Baba's grace, I got connected with Cliff, whom I had never known before. And so the second one is wonderful musically and technically. Um, but on this one, th this is an, I guess I'm basically a storyteller. Everything has a story. In, in, in the mid 70s, I, uh, Baba, I, this is the way I see the story. Baba sent uh, Ram Das, Richard Alpert, Ram Das into my life. Um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell this story. I, I was, after I had blown my mind on LSD a few years later, a lot of stuff from my childhood came to the surface that I couldn't talk about. And I was so full of shame. I couldn't live and I had a terrible breakdown. I, I, I come from, a, I'm a veteran, uh, <laughs> a veteran of the mind. Um, and I really didn't think I was gonna make it through. And I, I, this, this was stuff, some of it involved sexuality, uh, childhood sexual things and just sexual fantasies. I didn't think I could go to Kitty or Elizabeth and talk about these things. So, uh, one day I went to a bookstore and I saw, I, I tried to look for books by somebody who might know something. And I opened one of Ram Dass's books. I had seen him, I'd, I'd seen him a number of times, but I didn't know him personally. I'd read some books of his. I opened it to a page where he was visiting a brother of his in a mental hospital, a brother who believed he was Christ and, and that therefore he was entitled to steal people's cars and stuff and kept getting locked up. And, uh, his brother had said to him, uh, here, uh, I'm Christ, and they lock me up, and you wear a dress. Like He was talking about the robes Ram Dass wrote, wore for a little while, coming back from India. And everybody loves you. And Ram Dass said, that's because I know that everybody's Christ. And uh, I just felt he was very kind to his brother. So I wrote him this note. I wrote a few other people, including Marcia to do so I did write to her. But I wrote to Ram Dass something, it was not much longer than this, said, Dear Ram Dass, my soul, let's see. Is it possible, is there such thing as eternal damnation because I feel my soul is ruined? It was something like that. I didn't go into much more detail. And I don't, and a few weeks later, um, and you know, of course, Ram Dass worked with Baba, corresponded with Baba when he had taken LSD many times and realized he didn't know what the hell he was doing. And he felt Mayor Baba was the spiritual authority of, of, the of our time. And a lot of the correspondence between them became the, the pamphlet called God in a Pill. And also, I finally documented years later that I had heard for years, Mayor Baba had said, Richard is mine. And I found people that actually were told that by Erich, that Erich wanted them to know that Baba had said that. Uh, Ira Dietrich, the president of Sufism Reoriented, and also Alan Cohen. Erich told both of them that. So anyway, I wrote this. I'm going to go into this story. It, it wasn't planned. I was just going to do songs. But uh, a few weeks later, I had, I had made an attempt at suicide. Not, not a very serious attempt, I don't think. But when I was getting up, my mother told me there was a, a letter for me on the, where, where they put the letters. And 
I saw it was, it was from this thing called the Hanuman Foundation. That was the agency that Ram Dass had started for his spiritual work. And uh, you'll see why this is Ram Dass. It's, I feel like Bob has sent him to help me because that was a special case in certain ways. And I opened, and, and, and the letter, the return address of the letter was not New Hampshire, where I'd heard he was living and where I'd sent my letter. It was from Riverside Drive in New York City, and that was the street that I'd grown up on, that I'd been born on, sorry. Riverside Drive, yeah. So that gave me a chill. I opened the letter and there's a little piece of paper handwritten with a note said, Dear Max, your soul is not ruined and there is no damage to your thought or feeling whatever. Psychologically, you may be a mess, but spiritually you are beautiful and you are going to God. In order to go to God, we have to get all this shit inside us opened up. Why not come to visit me in New York City? It shouldn't take more than a couple of hours for starters. If you can't come to New York, write, uh, just write to me in more detail about your scene and uh, stay totally honest, open, and there's another word I can't remember. Then he wrote, God loves you and will show you as soon as you begin to love yourself. Blessings surround you, Ram Dass. And basically I went, I, I visited him. It turned out he was coming to Oklahoma City, closer to St. Louis, where I, where I was living with my parents in a few weeks and i went to his motel room the day after his talk and basically told him all the things i'd never been able to tell anybody that i'd been holding inside and that were curdling my life because of the shame and whatever i would say he would go ah what else and i would tell him something and say ah what else and he started saying i love you you're beautiful because he was rewarding me for my honesty instead of for you know artificial things and in about 10 minutes of that, this six months of suicidal depression was gone and we were just two souls in bliss, two rays of the sun. And uh, he told me he's not anybody's guru. I, I, I sort of bragged to somebody I, I met on the street, said, uh, I'm going to visit my guru. I was thinking Ram Dass is my guru and Mayor Bob is my master. But Ram Dass told me I'm not a guru. And I don't know what, he, he's a teacher, I guess. He said, I don't even know what that technical definition of that is. But anyway, I take this all as Bob is helping me through him. I, I felt the veil was so thin sometimes. I could just feel Bob's love. Anyway, so, <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing a song about that instead of the one I was going to do. It's, it's, it's changed again. Okay. This is a song that came out, the gratitude toward all of this grace to, to have me, you know, whole again and still be whole today at age 72. Sort of wrote this song by itself one day and, and it was amazing. I didn't know I could write songs. So anyway, this is called Stars in Your Eyes. And I always sing it to Baba, who I feel is behind everything. Stars in your eyes, telling me to glow. Stars in your eyes telling me to know who I am. Sometimes I wonder what went wrong so very long ago and why it got to hurt like that when I got to feeling low. But when I see you smiling at me, I know you're always here. And if I can but find you, I'll find love everywhere. I'll find love everywhere. Stars in your eyes telling me to glow. Stars in your eyes telling me to know who I am. Now take me on a journey to a deep and golden sea where bathed in golden spray I'll become you and you'll be me take me ever traveling then bring me home again to turn the teardrops into dew in the weary world of men in the weary world of men stars in your eyes Telling me to glow, stars in your eyes, telling me to know who I am. For once I was a pile of bones, 
Everything's a pile of rags and feathers. A lion in a messy room, never changing with the weather. But you showed me that behind that room is an ocean full of sun. And now I'm on the painful road. Now I'm on the glorious road to see where I've come from. See where we've all come from. See where I've come from. See where we've all come from. Stars in your eyes telling me to glow. Stars in your eyes telling me to know who I am. Stars in your eyes telling me to glow. Stars in your eyes telling me to know who I am. Who I am. Who I am. Okay. Okay, Baba. That's about 55 minutes. Should we stop now? I think that's good. If you're if you're feeling that's it, if you, unless you have another I don't another care. Song. I don't care. I mean, I got time today, but it's a question of I, you know, I don't want to step, you know, overstep anything. Do you have one more song? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. This is thank the you. Song I was going to do instead of that one. The the reason I told the Ramdas story is that during that period, I was at a retreat that Ramdas led. Uh, in uh, and uh, on a campus in Rhode Island, and uh, <clears throat> they had entertainment one evening, and this guy came and he sang this song, uh, and everybody just went nuts about it. And I felt it was a Baba song, it was just an incredible song. And then I heard people saying, you know, Ramdas didn't know if he was pure enough to sing for all these people, but, but this is incredible. And and I want and I called the guy up on, on the phone. Uh, the next week to get the chords. And I was just, I, I could hardly talk. To, I was just very shy. And I was trying to ask him for these chords. And I kept saying, and should I do it this way? And I, I would get nervous. And he, one time he said, chill out, man. <laughs> but he gave me the song and I've been singing it all these years. And I, I never knew what happened to him. I lost all, I couldn't find any listing of him on any internet sites or anything. I wanted to thank him. And then when I did this first CD, a few about four years ago i wanted to put it on the cd because i thought it was that great and i could find no evidence but some of my friends who knew about how to search for people like he, now he uses his polish names he was jerry something and now he's jersey and so we found him and and he let me put it on the cd and i just love it so so here it is it's called um wait a minute <laughs> what's the name of it don't leave me out yeah so this will be the closing song I was going to do Victory on TV, but we don't have time for all that next time. Don't leave me. Don't leave me out into the early morning light Unless you know that it's all right If I am in your sight I know it won't be wrong Following me, feeling free all the day I believe that it's okay As if you're in my heart I know it won't be wrong Following me, feeling free all the day I believe that it's okay When I feel you in my heart Sorry So nice to have you there I can feel your boundless love Fill me everywhere don't leave me out into the early morning light unless you know that it's all right. If I am in your side, I know it won't be wrong. Following me, feeling free all the day, I believe that it's okay. And if you're in my heart, I know it won't be wrong. Following me, feeling free all the day, I believe that it's okay. I can feel you know in me 
singing at my heart so I can feel you grow in me making my life whole don't lead me out into the early morning light unless you know that it's all right if i am in your sight i know it won't be wrong but when me feeling free all the day i believe that it's okay and if you're in my heart i know it won't be wrong Following me, feeling free all the day, I believe that it's okay. Wings are spreading near like stars, don't want to go alone. Ba 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 ha ba, steer my heart, guide my way back home. Don't read me out into the early morning light unless you know that it's all right. If I am in your side, I know it won't be wrong. Following me, feeling free all the day. I believe that it's okay. And if you're in my heart, I know it won't be long. Following me, feeling free all the day. I believe that it's okay. Feeling free all the day, I believe that it's okay. Okay. Avatar Mayor Baba TJ. Avatar Mayor Baba TJ. Thank you so much for coming, Jay Baba. Thank you, Max. What time did you get up this morning, Max? Well, I got I got up at like early, really early, like before five. I was uh, I was a little nervous about this. I mean, I didn't I didn't know if anybody would show up. But here you are. Oh, you silly boy. I know. Well, I got a, I, I, I corresponded with Jim Meyer uh, after his concert because I hadn't been able to make it to that. And I just wanted to tell him how great it was when I saw it on YouTube. And he wrote back, back and forth about some things going on with, in both our lives. But then he wrote, remember that when, when you play or do art or dance or serve people, serve Baba in people, there's really only you and he there. There's no audience. Don't worry about recognition or acceptance. You're just, it's Baba alone is there. And he said that's what he experiences when he does his concerts. And uh, I just thought, well, Baba, I'm going to show up and I know you'll be there too. It's, <laughs> here we are. You connected so much to my heart. Thank you. Oh, Jay Baba, thank you too. Good. I'm and I'm, I'm ready for you to sing more. Yeah. But, you know, about, as I said, uh, I've got time. And if, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> What's well, you know what they, you? the what? other thing they say is you always leave them wanting more. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. And I mean, you have obviously, <laughs> Baba has brought that to the front. <laughs> yes. We want yeah, more. Yeah, but there's, there's also encores, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there is encores. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Victory unto me. No. Victory okay. unto you. Uh -huh. What's the name? I, I'll do one more encore. People that, that, ha that can't stay can, are allowed to leave me on if they want. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to mute everybody again then so you see can. what a good song for an encore. Um, I think, yeah, I'm going to do this. Um, it's, I'm going to do. Oops. I'm sorry, sort of Max. A, what are you going to do, honey? It's a song called Love's River. It's the title song of the CD that Cliff helped me with. Looking for my pick, though. Wait a second. I lost the pick. That's all right. You don't need the pick. Sort of modeled on an Irish ballad. Oh, the street is a river. And your house a port of call And you are a sailor bound for home And the days that we pass 
Meet the ever shining sun Are the days of a heart That's loved to roam And can you feel love's river Flowing gently in your heart Can you feel love's river in your heart There is no one who is stranded on the fluid roads of love. There is no door its river cannot find. And the island of your heart will be found no more apart from the one you've never really left behind. Oh, the days, they are many, and the seasons, they are long, and the years pass in never-ending flow, but the longing of the heart is the finish and the start of this journey you've begun so long ago. Oh, the drama of the soul enacts its scenes as it unfolds, and life's stage and its actors we all know. But the scenes they all dissolve in an endless flowing love. For all life is a river to the goal. And can you feel love's river take you gently toward the goal? Can you feel love lead you toward the goal? Yes, can you feel love's river Lead you gently in your heart. Can you feel love's river in your heart? Hey, Jay Baba, thank you again. Jay Baba. Beautiful, Beautiful encore. Mm -hmm. I saw Al wiping <laughs> tears from his uh, cheeks there. Uh, can't see Al. Beautiful, see. beautiful. Okay. Well, let me see who's here. They, oh, look at there they are. Oh my <laughs> I'm God. I'm telling Thank you. you it's great to see you. There's a whole lot of chats in the chat box as well, just oh, saying cool. thank you. Is and... there a way to save the chat box? Um, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Okay. I wish there was, but okay. Cool. It's that cool. moment in time, I guess. Yeah. But you need to take a second and take them in, I think. Okay. Yes, you can yeah. save the chat. You can? You How do you do it, Fereste? Um, well, you go to the chat, and go there's the a chat. little three dot at the corner. Uh, okay. It may be that only hosts or co-hosts can do it. I can oh. do it, um, and I You'll will save it? the chat for you, Max, if you can't do it. Oh, that'd be great. Thanks, Fereste. Mm -hmm. You, you have my email address? Is it? Yeah, I do. Okay, great. Okay. Hi, honey. Come back. Come on in. <laughs> Barbara. Yeah. Oh, Barbara has her pajamas on. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course she does. We're all hanging out at home. Hi, Barbara. The Hi, Barbara. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Yeah. So good to see you. <laughs> we just had our 17th anniversary yesterday, or 22. Oh, oh wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Happy anniversary. Wow. Happy anniversary. Lovely. <laughs> so nice, Max. So grateful. Okay. Thank you so much. I love the pictures, too. What? Yeah, your artwork is fabulous. I love you that? Art. Thank you. Thank you. It all comes from Baba. You know, I just <laughs> sit here and as you know, you know about all of that. You know, it's really true. 
I mean, it, sometimes it seems you haven't tasted as well for a long time, but for me, when I look back, there's an awful lot of it there. <laughs> you know, there may have been droughts and things, and deserts to go through, but there's an awful lot of love. You brought that today. Thank you. So did everybody. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So that's it for now then.